It's big. It allows me to breathe and I love the skies. I love these huge skies. Oh, I think this might be it. Can I give you that, Mike? Sorry, it's a bit of pain. It's the first time I saw Mason. I really was impressed by the town square. It stands to reason that this celebration always falls on the hottest day of the year here in Mason, Texas. But scorching temperatures or not, Michael Grigsby and Rebecca Tolley wouldn't miss this for the world. They are two spectators who have certainly traveled the farthest to see the annual parade. Somewhere among the line of floats, Michael and Rebecca are looking for two old friends. David Johnson and Dennis Bollinger, two reluctant war heroes from two nearby towns, Menard and Brady, honored today in Mason for their service in Vietnam. It's also a reunion of sorts. More than 40 years from the day, British filmmaker Michael Grigsby walked into their lives. Forty years ago, 1969, I started thinking, what is it like to go to Vietnam? And then I thought even more interestingly, what is it like to come out of that situation after a year of hell? 25 men have gone from this small Midwest town to Vietnam. Three have returned from combat to this area within the last year. It was a war documentary with no war scenes, a simple story of three Texas teenagers Dennis, David, and Lamar, returning home to small town Texas. David Johnson has been back six months. Oddly enough, the film was a huge success in Europe, but virtually unknown in the United States. It was a bad part of my life, and I don't want to talk about it. I just went on with my life after that. That was just another part of my life, and I just let it go until, say, three or four years ago. I was actually working for a television production company in the UK full time, but I was talking to Michael at the same time and discussing ideas for things that we might, might work on together. And then one Sunday afternoon, it was December, I remember it, 2007, um, I asked Michael if I could watch the film that he had made about soldiers coming back from Vietnam. I was so moved by it. At the end of it, I. I just turned to Michael and I just said, I want to know what happened to them. What happened to them when you left? I had no idea what had happened to these people since we've been away. After 40 years, will you hear from them and they're coming back to Texas to do, think about doing another movie. For me, it was like picking up a conversation that I'd had 40 years ago, and then we came back and we just picked up the conversation again, just like that. Well, a lot of research led Michael and Rebecca back to small town Texas. Only thing is, they discovered Lamar Wyatt had died. Undeterred, the British filmmakers battled the Texas heat catching up with Dennis, David, and Lamar's family. A poignant 40-year story of life, of change, of coping with the scars of war. Before they returned to England, though, Michael and Rebecca promised to bring the new film back to the nearest theater, the historic Odeon Theater, over in Mason. And on this hot July afternoon, people from all over file in for the American premiere of we went to war. Oh, at first you feel you don't know how to take people because they don't know how to take you. Most of them don't know where you've been. I, I had a few of them ask me, where you been? I said, I've been in a friggin' war. Where you been? Suddenly to see it up there on the screen is so rewarding. You just feel this is beautiful. There's always something to bring it back. You'll never forget it. 
it was just like time just collapsed and I could see these young men in these older men. It's a lifelong outfit. It don't go away. This film was dedicated to my wife. That got me. It really got me. I'm so proud. I'm proud of this film. Very proud of it. I want to thank you for coming across the ocean to recognize our veterans. Neither Michael nor Rebecca expected the intense gratitude and outpouring of emotion in this old theater in the Texas Hill Country. They kept their promise, though, of a premiere here, a gesture long overdue. After more than 40 years. Just because they leave here today, that ain't parting. When they go back over yonder and I don't see them, uh, I'll be talking to them. We're the best friends for life. I personally feel like I've made lifelong friends. I, I, I couldn't forget that. I couldn't forget them. No matter how far away Dave and Dennis are physically, I always feel they're there, close to me. I hope it helps tell the story, the Vietnam story. And I think the Vietnam story will go on long after I'm gone. <laughs>